Hello everyone. So now we know what awful nightmare um, can do to a giant. Now we are going to find out about dreams. The big friendly giant was seated at the great table in his cave and was doing his homework. Sophie sat cross-legged on the tabletop nearby, watching him at work. The glass jar containing the one and only good dream day they had caught that day stood between them. The BFG, with great care and patience, was printing something on a piece of paper with an enormous pencil. What are you writing? Sophie asked him. Every dream is having its special label on the bottle, the BFG said. How else could I be finding the one I'm wanting in a hurry? But can you really and truly tell what sort of a dream it's going to be simply by listening to it? Sophie asked. I can, the BFG said, not looking up. But how? Is it by the way it hums and fizzes? You is less or more right, the BFG said. Every dream in the world is making a different sort of fuzzy hum music. And these grand swashboggling ears of mine is able to read that music. By music, do you mean tunes? I is not meaning tunes. Then what do you mean? Human beings is having their own music, right or left. Right, said Sophie. Lots of music. And sometimes human beings is very overcome when they's hearing wondrous music. They is getting shivers down their spindles, right or left. Right, said Sophie. So the music I so the music is saying something to them. It's sending them a message. I do not think of a human being is knowing what the message is, but they is loving it just the same. That's about right, Sophie said. But because of these jump squiffling ears of mine, the BFG said, I is not only able to hear the music that Dreams is making, but I is understanding it also. What do you mean, understanding it? Sophia said. I can read it, the BFG said. It talks to me. It's like a language. I find that just a little hard to believe, Sophie said. Here's a beautiful picture of the BFG and Sophie having their little chit chat while he writes the labels. I'll bet you is also finding it hard to believe in quackwinkles, the BFG said, and how they is visiting us from the stars. Of course I don't believe that, Sophie said. The BFG regarded her gravely with those huge eyes of his. I hope you will forgive me, he said, if I tell you that human beings is thinking they is very clever. But they is not. They is nearly all of them not much as in squeak pips. I beg your pardon, Sophie said. The matter with human beings, said the BFG, is that they is absolutely refusing to believe in anything unless they is actually seeing it right in front of their own snozzles. Of course, Quagwinkles is existing. I is meeting them oftenly. I is even chittering to them. He turned away contemptuously from Sophie and resumed his writing. Sophie moved over to read what he had written so far. The letters were printed big and bold but were very um not very well formed here is what it said this dream is about how i saving my teacher from drowning i is diving into the river from a high bridge and i is dragging my teacher to the bank and then i is giving him the kiss of death what sophie said the BFG stopped writing and raised his head slowly. His eyes rested on Sophie's face. I is telling you once before, he said quietly, that I is never having a chance to go to school. I is full of mistakes. They is not my fault. I do my best. You is a lovely little girl, but please remember that you is not exactly Miss Know Everything yourself. Oh, I'm sorry, Sophie said. I really am. It is very rude of me to keep correcting you. The BFG gazed at her for a long while. Then he bent his head again to his slow, laborious writing. Tell me honestly, Sophie said. If you blew this dream into my bedroom when I was asleep, 
Would I really and truly start dreaming about how I saved my teacher from drowning by jumping off, by diving off a bridge? More, the BFG said, a lot more. But I cannot be scribbling the whole blob flunking dream on a ditchy bit of paper. Of course there is more. The BFG laid down his pencil and placed one massive ear close to the jar. For about 30 seconds he listened intently. Yes, he said, nodding his great head solemnly up and down. This dream is continuing very nice. It has a very dory hunky ending. How does it end, Sophie said. Please tell me. You would be dreaming, the BFG said. And the morning after you were saving the teacher from the river, you was arriving at school and you were seeing all the 500 pupils sitting in the assembly hall and all the teachers as well. And the head teacher is then standing up and saying, I is wanting the whole school to go to give three cheers for Sophie because she is so brave and is saving my life of our fine arithmetic teacher, Mr. Pickings, who was unfortunately pushed off the bridge into the river by our gym teacher. Miss Amelia Upscott. So three cheers for Sophie. And the whole school is then cheering like mad and shouting bravo, well done. And forever after that, even when you is getting your sums all bunk squishled and muggled up, Mr Figgins is always giving you 10 out of 10 and writing good work, Sophie, in your exercise book. Then you is waking up. I like that dream, Sophie. Of course you like it, the BFG said. It is a piss wizard. He licked the back of the label and stuck it on the jar. I was usually writing a bit more than this on the labels, he said, but you was watching me and making me jumpsy. I'll go and sit somewhere else, Sophie said. Don't go, he said. Look in the jar carefully and think, and I think you will be seeing this dream. Sophie peered into the jar and there, sure enough, she saw the faint translucent outline of something about the size of a hen's egg. There was just a touch of colour in it, a pale sea green, soft and shimmering and very beautiful. There it lay, this small oblong sea green jellyish thing at the bottom of the jar, quite peaceful but pulsing gently, all of it moving in and out ever so slightly as though it were breathing. It's moving, Sophie cried. It's alive. Of course it's alive. What will you feed it on, Sophie asked. He's not needing any food, the BFG told her. That's cruel, Sophie said. Everything alive needs food of some sort, even trees and plants. The north wind is alive, the BFG said. It is moving. It touches you on the cheek and on the hands, but nobody is feeding it. Sophie was silent. This extraordinary giant was disturbing her ideas. He seemed to be leading her towards mysteries that were beyond her understanding. A dream is not needing anything, the BFG went on. If it is a good one, it is waiting peaceably forever until it is released and allowed to do its job. If it is a bad one, it's always fighting to get out. BFG stood up and walked over to one of the many shelves and placed the latest jar among the thousands of others. Please can I see some of the other dreams? Sophie asked him. And we will stop there and find out next time maybe a little bit more about some of the other dreams. So, really interesting because the BFG keeps telling Sophie about things that that exist that she doesn't believe in or didn't didn't even know existed and he actually said that human beings don't know much they think they know everything but actually there's things they don't know and I wonder if that's true I wonder if there are things out there that human beings still don't know about um because once upon a time People used to believe that the earth was flat and then they learned that actually it's round. And maybe once upon a time we didn't know much about space um, and now we know a lot more. So I wonder if there's more, lots more things that human beings still haven't discovered that we can learn about. Which seems quite, quite. Okay.
see you next time.